Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening. Hang tight for just a little bit here. We're going to give folks about 60 seconds to filter into the room and get technology stuff all figured out. So thanks for being here and hang on. Got a lot of punctual people tonight. I like that. I was part of a webinar earlier this week that started with loud disco music and a disco ball. So I think for our next set series. <laughs> Noted for next time. It does what <laughs> does that kind of look like a disco ball? A little bit. Okay, Joe, you take care of the disco ball. I take care of the music. Let's do it yeah. that way. All right, fair enough. All right, everyone, it looks like we've got a bunch of folks in the room already. And in the interest of time, and because we've got so many really wonderful guests with us tonight, I think we're going to get rolling. So hello and welcome to the Snowblower exclusive. So this is the final installment of our summer long, fall long electric lawn care 101 webinar series. My name is Joe Olson. I do communications at Fresh Energy. We're co-hosting this event today with Shift to Electric and the American Lung Association. Uh, and I'd like to take a few minutes here for some housekeeping. So we'll be taking questions, your questions, at the end of the webinar. So please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. There should be a little button in Zoom. Uh, using that function, you'll be able to upvote other people's questions. So if someone asked something that you would have asked, just give it a thumbs up and it'll push it right up the list. Uh, we'll probably dedicate the last 15, 20 minutes to your questions. Um, feel free to use the chat function, but if you've got a dedicated question, stick it in the Q&A that will ensure we don't miss it. Uh, all right, I'm going to move along here onto the next slide. We've got a bunch of guests and panelists today, a regular face for those of you folks who have been on any of our electric yard care webinars. We've got Yuka Kukinen, we've got Lisa Thurston and Jillian Innes. Thank you guys for being here. And for an electric lawn care first, we have a guest panel. We've got two gentlemen who are going to speak to their experiences with their electric snowblowers. We've got Roger and Justin here. So thank you much, so much for your time tonight. And we've got a bunch of people in the room and I wanna find out who's here. So I am going to send you a poll. I think this is the right one. So who here is planning on purchasing an electric snowblower. And excuse me if I say lawnmower, we did a whole bunch of lawnmower webinars and it's really hard to get all the electric yard care stuff straight. So please fill out the poll. Let us know what you're planning on doing. So it looks like we've got some people who aren't totally sure, which is great. This is the perfect event for you. Uh, we're gonna cover a bunch of stuff tonight. Electric technology advances, clean air and health benefits, the other benefits of going electric with your yard care and your snow blowers. Uh, what's on the market, what you should consider when you're buying something for a place like Minnesota that has a lot of snow, um, battery capacity, electricity costs, care and maintenance. And then of course, last but not least, that Q and A. So, I'm gonna end the polling right now and share the results with you because I know people like to see it. It looks like we've got a lot of people who are unsure about what they wanna buy as far as a snowblower snow removal product goes. So I'm excited for the conversation. I think I'm ready to turn it over to you, Yuka. Do you wanna talk a little bit about advancements? All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, so good evening, everyone. My name is Yuka Kukkonen. And uh, next we'll talk a little bit about technology here. Um, why we are talking about snowblowers and why they have actually come in the market, the electric ones, is that technology has just gotten so much better. <clears throat> so battery technology has advanced rapidly in recent years. You can see there in that, uh, that graph there that 2010, uh, one kilowatt hour battery pack price was over $1,000. And now in 2018, it was only $176. And since then it has also come down. So we're starting to get closer to $100 um, uh, per kilowatt hour for the battery pack price. So that means that I have here one battery pack that is, okay, sorry for my uh, poor uh, quality, it's kind of cool looking. Anyways, one of these battery batteries that are for uh, those snow blowers or uh, this one is 280 watt hours. 
So it would have cost $300 2010. So you can see that, and there's two of those in one of those snow blowers. So just the batteries would have cost $600 for that snow blower. So it would have been much more expensive unit at that time. Um, and now that same unit probably costs 40 bucks, maybe maybe $50 still uh, around that time. So it's much, much uh, cheaper now. And that enables us to have a bigger batteries in these units and more power available for the snow removal. The other thing that is, has happened is that our electricity production has shifted to more renewable electricity. So um, electricity utilities like Excel Energy are closing their coal plants and moving into renewable energy. And that means that there's less carbon emissions in the process. So you can see here a graph that shows uh, Excel's um, emission reduction in recent years and in the future. And that's pretty steep graph. So it's coming down, down quite rapidly. So that's really, really good. Um, so our um, systems, I mean, are getting cleaner all the time. It's cleaner to use these. And this is the same thing that also applies to electric cars. Um, I usually work more with electric cars and, and they're the same thing applies there. That's why we have more affordable electric cars and that's why it's much cleaner to also drive them. So. That's cool. Um, next, I will um, let American Lung Association, uh, Lisa and Gillian, to talk, talk more about the uh, air quality related things when it comes to this topic. Great, and thank you for allowing us to be part of this presentation. It's such a great opportunity. As you could said, my name is Lisa Thurston and I am the Senior Manager at the American Lung Association and also support and coordinate the Twin Cities Clean Cities Coalition. Also joining me tonight is our Green Corps member, Jillian. So tonight I'm gonna to talk about air pollution associated with um, yard care equipment, what kind of emissions are created and why you should pay attention to this. And, and then Jillian's gonna take over and go into some detail about a worksheet that you can use to find the best electric snowblower to fit your needs. Next slide. So before I get into the issue at hand, I wanted to take a moment to address why I am from, with the American Lung Association am involved in air quality. The American Lung Association mission is to save lives by improving lung health and preventing lung disease. And one strategy under that is to improve the air we breathe so that it will not cause or worsen lung disease. Our office in St. Paul, as I mentioned, also coordinates the TC4, which is one of nearly 100 coalitions throughout the country in the US Department of Energy's Clean Cities Program. Coalitions are made up of stakeholders working to foster the nation's economic, environmental, and energy security by working locally to advance affordable, domestic, transportation fuels, energy efficiency, mobility systems, and other fuel saving technologies and practices. This can be done through the use of alternative fuels like biofuels and electricity and other strategies that reduce our country's dependence, dangerous dependence on petroleum like this presentation tonight. Next slide. So what people don't realize is that emissions, often don't realize is that emissions uh, from the mobile sources are, the, are from vehicles and equipment is what we use almost every day. This is the single largest source of pollutants in Minnesota. And that is why we focus our efforts on fuels and vehicles. Air pollution affects everyone, but can be especially harmful to the young and elderly, as well as to anyone with respiratory conditions such as asthma or COPD. People of color and low income communities are also disproportionately impacted. And this is true in part because these communities tend to have higher rates of respiratory conditions and other conditions that are uh, worsened by air pollution. They are also more likely to live in and work in areas with higher levels of air pollution, such as near busy roadways. And there's also been growing evidence that's, that seems to demonstrate that people who live in these areas with higher levels of air pollution are more adversely affected by COVID-19. Next slide. So as you may know, the Environmental Protection Agency sets standards for the amount of each pollutant that can be in the air without endangering our health. Every five years, the EPA reviews these standards and decides if the most recent science shows that the standards should be set at a lower, should be set lower in order to protect health. For ozone, that level, that review happened in 2015. And in fact, 
Their science review panel found that scientific studies demonstrated a need to lowering the standard from where it, was, it stands today at 70 parts per billion. Some communities are currently close to the standard at 68 parts per billion, as you can see here, but none exceeded at this time. So as long as we continue to keep our air pollutants at this level, we will remain in attainment. Keep in mind that doesn't mean that our air is as healthy as it should be. And as a health organization, the American Lung Association believes a level of 60 parts per billion would be the best to protect the health of Americans. Another pollutant particulate matter is in the similar situation to ozone, where our current levels in Minnesota are near the standard recommended by the EPA by the Clean Air Science Advisory Committee. We need to continue efforts to reduce levels of pollution in order to protect our health as well as to remain in attainment. Next slide. So now I'm going to go into dig into pollution associated with yard equipment. Snowblowers create one pound of carbon monoxide emissions per hour, which is the equivalent of driving a car for 70 miles. And at least 70 million gallons of gasoline are spilled annually just filling yard equipment. You know, this does cover both um, summer and winter, but it's the, the, big, the big fact here. And this fact can be applied to all the equipment with spillage and fuel theft um, being the major cost for fleets and consumers. On the left, the pie graph is provided by the MPCA, which showing the breakdown of pollutants in the big picture, which is part of the second largest source of pollutants you can see in the 20%. And the right graph shows the rate of increase of employees currently needed to maintain the landscape industry, which means more equipment is needed to maintain landscapes, parks, and properties. And as we know, we've all spent more time in, it, in these outdoors this year with uh, COVID-19. So this graph was provided by the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. And so with that, I'm gonna pass over to Jillian who will go into detail about the pollutions mentioned as uh, well as the tools and worksheet. Thanks. Great, thank you, Lisa. So according to the most recent study from the EPA, gasoline powered garden and lawn equipment emit a significant amount of pollutants. Um, in fact, they found that approximately 26.7 million tons of pollutants were emitted by gasoline powered garden equipment within a year. And these are really large numbers, especially considering that the users are in such close proximity when all of this is being emitted. Um, and while not everyone may think about the ways that their gasoline powered lawn equipment impacts their health, I'd like to talk specifically about the health impacts of three pollutants that people are probably a little bit less familiar with, but are still really big impactors. So I'm gonna talk about particulate matter, nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds or VOCs. Next slide, please. Okay, so the particulate matter produced by gasoline powered equipment has a range of sizes, but the one that we focus on are the really small ones, um, the particles that are smaller than 2.5 micrometers in diameter. Um, this is called PM 2.5. And you can see in the visual here, that um, it takes about four PM 2.5s per PM 10. And so that's about 20 PM 2.5s to go across the entire human hair. So it's really, really small. And the PM 2.5s are so small, they can really get into your lungs and irritate your eyes and your airways. Um, it's also um, small enough that can cause problems with your respiratory and cardiovascular systems as well. Um, so short-term exposure to fine particles can cause a variety of health problems, as Lisa had discussed earlier. Um, and over time, breathing fine particles in the air increases chances of COPD, chronic bronchitis, cardiovascular disease, or even lung cancer. Next slide, please. So volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, and nitrogen oxides are emitted by equipment um, and are significant pollutants because of their contribution to the formation of ground level ozone. So VOCs react with nitrogen oxides to create ozone molecules. UV radiation from the sun then speeds up the reaction, which is why ground level ozone um, is much higher on hot sunny days in the summer. So exposure to ozone is likened to sort of a, like a sunburn in your lungs. And can, and can trigger asthma or other lung conditions 
which can lead to ER visits and hospitalizations. Next slide, please. So here is a list of um, electric snowblowers that we had put together. Um, and it is, electric yard equipment is a great way to reduce the pollution that you generate. And you expose yourself to you know, less PM 2.5, just better for your lungs and cardiovascular health. Um, and so in this list, each row is a particular model of snowblower. And each column is, this, um, is a piece of information about it. This whole list will be on electriclawninfo.org. Um, and it has about 22 electric lawn mowers that you can, or sorry, electric snow blowers that you can choose from. I'm doing it too, Lisa. Um, so the first column is the name of the brand. And then the next is the specific model number along with a picture of it as well. Um, there's also the clearing width and clearing depth. So it, how much snow, um, like the depth of snow that can be cleared and how, like the width of what can be cleared. Um, and then it also has um, all of the battery information as well. So um, it has um, weight. Um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Voltage, um, amp hours, total capacity, and all of that in the list has been adjusted so that it takes into account how many batteries each snowblower requires. So let's say it requires two, then the total capacity is doubled from if it were just one. So this is adjusted. Um, it also has throwing distance for how, thro how far um, the chute can throw snow. It has um, what stage it is. So snowblowers are usually single stage or two stage. So it kind of just depends on which, um, what kind of snow you're trying to do. So single stage is powdery snow, two stage can be up to wetter snow. Um, it also has, if it's self-propelled. So um, some snow blowers you have to put a lot of labor into and that's more manual and the self-propelled, it kind of helps itself along. Um, and then it also has MSRP, um, what kind of warranty is on the snowblower, and then what other equipment inside of the same brand line that the battery can fit inside of. So with that, I will hand it over to Yuka. Thanks, Jillian. Uh, this is really, really valuable list. So I would definitely uh, recommend everybody to go and check it out. It uh, <clears throat> provides all the information you need and you can do easy comparisons between different uh, snowblowers there. So thanks, Gillian, for putting this together. It's an extremely valuable thing for us. So um, general benefits of, of moving to electric snowblowers. Um, first of all, less energy used. It's much less energy that you're using when you're using electric motors <clears throat> because they are much more energy efficient. I'll come back to that. We do a little uh, math there later about that. Of course, there's no emissions, so it's better for you, it's better for your neighborhood, it's better for your city, and it's better for planet. So everybody really wins in, in that game overall. It's also much quieter, which is great for you and your neighborhood. Uh, my neighbor, for example, said that he, he can now go anytime he wants. It doesn't matter. He can go and do the snow blowing, and no one will be uh, disturbed by it because it's just so quiet. There's less vibration because you don't have the... Um, internal combustion isn't uh, there anymore. And one of the best features that I really like is that you don't need to mess with the gas anymore. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to store it. You don't have to worry about it off gassing in your garage and your garage smells like gas. And um, as we know nowadays, a lot of this gas just gets stale over time. And therefore every fall you would have to replace the, uh, the gas and potentially filters and other things. So it's just, it's much more labor intensive and, and really not, not fun to work with. The cool thing about electric snowblowers, they always start, no problem with that. Cold weather, electric motors don't care. They're fine. They, they like, actually like it. Um, it's much cheaper to use. So both in dollars and time-wise because there's less maintenance and so forth for it. Uh, very easy maintenance. I'll show you a couple of uh, tips on the maintenance side on the snowblowers. They are lighter weight and then easier to store because you don't you can practically put them in any any <clears throat> position. 
because there's no oil and there's no um, gas in them, so you don't have to worry about the spills or leakages. Can I get the next slide, please? All right, so let's talk about the battery capacity a little bit, the electricity cost. Then. <clears throat> so when you look at these batteries, like the one that I have here, um, they usually tell that it's, this one says 56 uh, volts, and then it usually says the amp hours in a capital letters. This doesn't seem to be having, oh, there it says five amp hours. So then you're like, okay, well, if I have this snowblower here that says it has six amp power battery and that one has four amp power battery, is the other one bigger? Well, you don't know it's just by talking, looking at the amp hours, you actually have to do a little math there. But fortunately, it's very easy math. So you just do the volts time amp hours and you get watt hours. And that actually tells us what's the actual capacity of the battery. So like in this battery's case, this is 56 volts, five amp hours, that's 280 watt hours. And when you do this math, then you can start to compare between different um, snow blowers or lawn mowers or anything, the battery capacity, how much capacity they have and in, in them. And just note that many of the lawn mowers and snow blowers might have more than one battery that they're using. So then you have to take that into account there. But usually the battery capacity range what we have seen in snow blowers is between 200 and 900 watt hours. And of course, more capacity, longer use time or more power available. Good thing with this is that you can always add the capacity by buying a second battery or two more batteries if, if, if that's the case. And some of these uh, snow blowers actually when you purchase it might come with just one battery or the other model might come with two batteries. So you might be able to even uh, choose it at that point. So keep that in mind. So then the math part. So thousand watt hours is one kilowatt hour. And uh, one kilowatt hour of electricity cost about 12 cents. That's just the average there. And if we think that average snow clearing consumes about 500 watt hours, then it costs you six cents because it's half of one kilowatt hour. And a uh, little more math and we come out that you can actually take care of 17 snow days with $1. So clearly you are not gonna be paying too much for your electricity when using these. These are pretty cheap to do. So I, I would be, I, I'm hopeful that I don't have to do 17 snow days this year. We'll see. Um, I like snow, but, but, but at some point it just might be a bit too much. All right. Uh, next slide, please. So then battery compatibility. Manufacturers have their own battery lines. So when you're purchasing one unit, uh, then you should consider what kind of other equipment are you gonna be using in your yard? Because most likely if you buy a Toro snowblower, you probably will be looking into Toro lawnmower and other equipment or Eco snowblower and Eco lawnmower and other things. All of these seem to be pretty good. So I'm, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't take too much headache out of it. Just choose whatever works for you. But just keep that in mind that you can't really swap the batteries between the different manufacturers. So there isn't really a standardization. Next slide, please. All right. When you think about the snow blowers, uh, one of the first decisions you have to make is, is it going to be corded or cordless? So corded or battery powered. So you can choose the corded if you want a very affordable snowblower. Those are usually $100 to $200. Um, new used ones you can sometimes, I mean, you oftentimes find less than hundred bucks. I, for example, bought one that is right there. I paid $75 for it. I'll tell more about it later. Uh, they are usually a little lighter than the battery ones because they don't have the, you don't have to carry the battery there but you have to have accessible out, outside outlets. So you can plug the cord in there and then you have to be dealing with the cord. So that's up to you. If it either works for you or it doesn't. Um, in my case, for example, I used that one year. It worked actually really well. Cord is a little bit of hassle and I could have gotten by it, but, but then I bought a used uh, battery powered that I had already batteries for it. So I could just buy the unit and that works, works well for me. So now 
one of my friends is going to be buying that one from me for 70 bucks. So, so it'll get a new life from somebody else. But um, that's, that was my, my process. So if you, if you think about that, you don't want to be playing with the cord, then uh, battery power uh, one is, is right for you. Uh, it also, you can get some self-propelled snow blowers. If you find a, get the battery powered one, usually they are dual states. I think there's a one single state that can do that. And then when you have the batteries, you can use them with other equipment. So that's also a good thing. Next one, please. So here's a picture of then, this happens to be an ego, um, two states that Justin will show us actually how it looks in real life. So I don't go into details of, of all those uh, handles and all of that. We'll see in real life how they work there. But when you start to look at the snow blower, think about how big of an area you have that needs to be cleared. Usually bigger the area is, more battery capacity you need. That's kind of, kind of uh, what you have to take into account there. Think about what's the clearing width that you want to cover. That's, that usually comes with the size of the wind, but also the depth is how deep is the snow you want to, want to go. This goes back to kind of like what kind of style do you have for snow clearing? Are you the kind of person that goes there when the snow starts to come down in the evening, you go there already in the evening and do the first run at that time. And then in the morning, you go and clear the rest of it. So you do it in two stages. Or are you one that are like when the snow starts to fly, you're like, I'm not going to go out there. I'm just going to wait till it's all down and then I'm going to go to do the job. So that's most likely then you will have a, a thicker um, amount of the snow there. So take that into account. But usually all of these, I mean, some of the smaller uh, units don't have maybe as much power as some of the battery, uh, some of the internal combustion engine one did in the past. But usually in our, our um, like in Minnesota, I don't think that's a big issue, especially if you're in a metro area or, or somewhere in the, in the suburbs, depending on what your situation is. I think you need a really big unit if you have a long uh, area or a big area that you have to cover. If it's very windy area, um, or if you're expecting a lot of snow, like I'm thinking about somewhere in a North Shore, when you get a lot of lake uh, effect snow, and then it's very windy there. So you have a lot of uh, wind blowing the snow into your yard and everything. Then you definitely might need a bigger unit than, than a smaller one. But in our place here in St. Paul, there's not too much lake effect snow and, uh, and it's not, not usually an issue in that way. So then you think about the single or two stage. A single stage is the, are the smaller ones and two stage are the bigger ones. And I think we can see uh, Roger and Justin probably can show us a little bit more how they are. But if you look at the picture there, you can see in the front there in a the deck there, there's the auger that goes like this. In a single state, that, that auger both, it kind of like moves the snow there, but it also does the throwing it. So that's a single state. It only has that one auger there. If it's a dual state uh, or two stage, then that auger, actually just kind of like jumps the uh, snow there, pushes it back. And there's a second one, that it's called impeller. And that one goes much faster back there. And then it throws it, uh, throws the snow away. So it's, that's why it's two states. There's a two uh, different steps there of moving the snow and it can do more work that way. So that's, that's the difference between single states and two stage. Self-propelled or not, if you have a bigger one, you definitely want to consider uh, self-propelled unit. It's easier to handle. At the same time, there are also bigger units. Uh, two states self-propelled units. If you look at the weight of these, and um, I'll mention it la later, they're the weight, but uh, single state stage ones are between 20 to 45 usually here on weight wise. But then when you go to uh, dual states, uh, two stage ones, they are, I mean, some of them are 106 pounds here. Uh, then what was the ego one? 143 pounds. So they are much bigger 
uh, units overall. So take that also into account if you want a smaller or bigger unit, depending on what your needs are. Battery size, of course, you can you can look at the uh, what's the battery size, and that's where that um, table is very useful because it tells you all the information about that. Think about the battery compatibility, and then look at also the war warranty, and that's mentioned in this table too. All right, next slide, please. I think that brings us to the demo portion of our evening. So everyone bear with us. We're gonna be doing some video here. Um, and if it comes through choppy or weird on your computer, I do apologize. Um, it'll be, this whole thing will be posted on YouTube tomorrow. So you can check it out there. So first we are going to show you what the Yardman electric snow thrower uh, looks like and how it works. So this is mine. I have to admit it. I can't deny it. Um, my father bought it to clear his deck in International Falls, and he did it for about a month and decided it was really just moving stuff around and not really clearing. Um, so it kind of started collecting dust or snow, and I adopted it and uh, am looking for a buyer. So here we go. He throws stuff straight at you. And that's as far as I go with my cord. Um, yeah. So whoop, as you can see, not the most powerful tool, but okay for small spaces, um, as long as you have a good length of cord. Uh, next, we're going to do a video. Oh, You want me to show you this one first? All right, you go. All right, uh, I'll tell a little bit if you highlight my video here. Yep. So um, uh, here's one of those. Uh, these are kind of like what they call like snow, uh, snow shovel, uh, electric snow shovel um, or such. Um, so you can see there's just a place for, for cord here. Uh, this is the unit. And then you just push it ahead uh, like, like in that video Joe showed to you. And um, uh, so far I haven't heard very rave reviews from users about this one. Um, as you can see from the video, it throws really nicely the snow ahead of you. But then the problem is when you go and do the second run on it, it throws the snow again right ahead of you and all over the place. So it's a little hard in that way. Um, it doesn't do too much for that. But I was wondering if you could use this kind of like a, like a broom that you're going to go small sections ahead and then you go next small sections ahead. And that way, maybe you can use it. But again, I, I, ladies are saying that it's not doesn't work. So I, I believe them. They have actually tested this a little longer than I have. I think it calls for more patience and perseverance than I have. Uh, okay, so I think we're ready to move on to the Eco Single stage. And as you guys can see, there's only that one uh, piece right in the front. And video, here goes. Yeah. lucky are we that we got a bunch of snow that we could test these a couple weeks back. So that's the, that was the ego single stage. Uh, you could, do you want to say anything about it yeah. before I move on? I will um, then show right now my, um, my units here. And um, if you highlight the picture, then I can probably see what this looks like. So I'm actually going to cover both of the units that I have here right now. So here's the corded one that I bought, as I said, used one. And I have to say, here's, here's where, you, where the cord goes right back here. And it has, with this one, you just kind of like yank that around to turn the, the chute to right direction. And then you can adjust the chute here. So very simple manual uh, systems here. This is probably 20 years old. So this can last a long time. 
Uh, that's the cool thing about electric machines. There's, there's the motor itself can, can last forever practically. And I kind of like this one truthfully. It, it, it was pretty powerful and uh, it has a really nice uh, rubber blade here. So it, it was working well. And with this one, this actually pulled pretty nicely. When, when the rubber blade starts to move, it actually has a kind of impact of a little bit of self-propelling. So it helps you to push the uh, snowblower ahead. And this did a good job with it. So it was very, very easy to, to use when I used it. So that was that. Then I got this, this summer this used um, Ego single stage one. This is a little bit more refined. It has a control for the uh, speed here. Um, it has two batteries back here. So you can just pop them up here, right here. And uh, I can actually show you what it, and then you can adjust that uh, shoot very easily there with one lever here. Um, and I can show you how, what it sounds like when you run this one. So let's go. As you can hear, it's not too loud at all. It's very quiet. So very neighbor friendly uh, unit. But I'm gonna pop out the batteries now and I'll show you a couple more things here. One thing that I found a little surprising is that this unit did not kind of like self-propel because of the blade the same way as the old one did. So I had to push this one more. And I was like, why is that? Why they are very similar in construction. Both have a rubber blade. So why aren't they same? And then I looked into looked more into this one and it turns out that this actually needs some maintenance. So I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, the blade itself was pretty worn. Uh, good thing is that these are easy to replace. You just remove the uh, screws there and put the new blades in. I just ordered new blades for this one. They were $45, um, the blades for it. But the other thing that was also interesting is this underneath here, this, there's a kind of like a lip here. Um, it's plastic construction and it's called scraper. And this is the one, some of these, some of the bigger units have a, on the side here, they have a uh, kind of bars that, that this stands on when you, when you push it. So they are, so it kind of glides on top of them. These smaller ones don't have it and this scraper plate does that at the same time. So that was the, that is a challenge that this is actually very worn. Somebody has used a lot this unit already. So this is worn. So I ordered a new scraper plate that will cost me $20 and they arrive tomorrow. So then I will replace both the plates here and the scraper plate. And then I'm expecting this to be actually then uh, move more easily forward because it's not hitting the ground with the front here anymore uh, with these edges. So that's one maintenance thing that you can look at for for older uh, units like this one. So All you're right. saying if we get a bunch of snow, we can thank you for it. Great. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. I'll take blame for everything. <laughs> well, that's, that's just too easy, Yuka. Yeah, I know. Uh, another video demo of the Snow Joe. This one is Rogers. And I'm going to pop over to YouTube and we will hear from Roger. Hello, I'm Roger Klish and I'm going to show you my new electric snowblower. I'm going electric with everything. This is my Chevy Bolt over here. And um, yeah, I've got electric everything now, I think. This is the last piece. So this is a Snow Joe. Um, I bought it uh, online for under $700. It's got 80 volts, two batteries. It's gonna give me 30 minutes of run time. It's a little slower than I'd like, a little smaller and slower, but uh, it seems to do the job because I have a 200 foot driveway and uh, it's, it's a lot of snow to move. But I think this guy will work. I had it out this morning doing this. I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration. So, 
Awesome. And I think when we talk to Joe or to Roger, I'm Joe. When we talk to Roger right now, uh, he might even show us his driveway. So Roger, do you want to talk a little bit about your snow, Joe? Oh, we're not hearing you. Unmute. Okay. Oh, there, there you go. And now we just turn on your video and we'll be all set. There you are. Hello. <laughs> okay. Hello. Okay. Um, there we go. I can see myself. All right. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah. So I already, you already saw this snow Joe in the video. So I'll just add a few more things to it. Uh, here it is. Uh, let me turn the camera around. That's going to be a little easier here. There we go. Okay, uh, yeah, and as I said in the video, I have about a 200 foot driveway. So that's a lot of snow to move. So I was looking for the largest unit I could find and this one was a, a pretty good price on eBay for uh, just under $700 and uh, 80 volts. It's got, let me open this up here, two batteries in here. Okay, and um, it's two stage. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on here. So you can see the three speeds and one reverse. And it's got nice LED lights, check those out. And I will show you, it's a little dark out here, but I'm gonna show you the auger here and the impeller. If you can see that up inside there. Um, and this chute, this is kind of cool, this chute is, Motorized, there's a small motor here. Look at that. Little button here on the handle for that. And um, I hit fast to speed. There we go, and they're off. So, um, and it is self-propelled. Not the biggest wheels, like I say, it's not the biggest thing, but uh, we haven't had a big enough snow yet to really test it. Um, I'm hoping the 30 minutes will do it. I think it will as far as getting the main part of the drive and I can always charge my batteries and get the rest later. So um, I don't think I have much more to add. I think I did mention there's my Chevy Bolt. I have solar panels and a lot of other electric yard equipment too. So I'll leave it there, thanks. Thank you so much, Roger. Gonna remove your spotlight and I'm going to just share my screen again really quick. Um, we're gonna have a snowless review from Justin. Uh, you know, we hoped for more snow this week and it just didn't happen, um, but he's got an ego two stage that he's ready to fire up and it's got all sorts of bells and whistles. So I'm gonna pause my sharing and we're going to feature Justin's video. One second, there we go. All right, Justin, ready when you are. Oh, you're muted. There you yes. go. You have to mute, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm on my second snow, uh, electric snowblower right now. Um, two years ago, I got the Stone Joe, which is the model just before Rogers, uh, which works fine. Uh, the only reason I decided to upgrade when Ego came out with a new one was because I had a lawnmower and I wanted to get down to one battery system. Um, and so that was a big driving push and I have a friend that's going to buy the old one off of me. So um, the new one is very similar to a lot of the gas ones where it has the 24 inch and it's a little bit taller chute than the snow You can kind of see them side by side. Uh, nice big handles on top. Uh, you have the lever, you can swap it back and forth, and you can also adjust the chute height up and down on the fly. Uh, the other thing I, I know a lot of gas propelled ones is once it's driving forward, if you're running the auger, you can let up and the auger will stay running. You can see that handle stay down, so you can make adjustments while you're moving. So, you know, that was the other reason for the upgrade a little bit more than the snow jelly. But it came with a lot of features that all the gas snowblowers you know, or a lot of the higher end ones have today. The other thing I thought was really nice is 
Not only is there a speed control for how fast it goes front, forward and back, is there's also a speed control for the, uh, the augers. So you can faster and slower, and then same for the augers. So you can increase the auger speed. So if you don't need to throw the snow as far, you know, and I actually, when I was blowing out my neighbor's driveway, I didn't want to throw it over into the next driveway over. I just turned, you know, this auger speed down and I was only throwing about 10 feet instead of the 40, 50 feet. So um, came with a lot of nice options on it. And of course, as the LEDs on it, um, there we go, hit the save and stuff. Little bit bigger tires than the snow joke, but not much. Um, but they seem to do the job. And, you know, that one worked fine for me last year. You can see manual crank on it. Um, but, you know, I'm excited to give this one a whirl. Um, you want to see anything else? Justin, are you selling your old one? Yes. All right. So uh, send send offers to Justin's wave. If <laughs> I already haven't spoken for her, so. Oh, you are. Okay, sorry. <laughs> he was supposed to come pick it up tonight, but I told him he had to wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to proceed with our demos, and for this one, uh, we're going to go analog and look at Yuka's new toy, the Fiskers snow sled shovel he's calling it like the finished oh. dream machine so let's see how that works go it it's actually a very All good right. unit i like it a lot um i can show it to oh. you if you highlight my video here yep so, i'm coming all, all right. right here, here we, we are so this is the unit this is used in in nordic countries everywhere and, and as you can see it's very light i'm using just one finger here right now to lift this one. I had a heavier one in the past um, that was was not uh, fish cars. It was some local <laughs> production, uh, which was OK. It worked well, but this is clearly an um, excellent uh, unit. I just, just got it and got to test it out. So if you are not looking to buy a powered tool and you want something that is light and easy to use, these are really good because, as you noticed in the video, I don't you don't throw the snow with this one. This is not a shovel. You just push it and you push it away from it. And you can go actually really over or really high banks with this one too, because you just slide it over and then pull it back and the snow stays there. And this is extremely useful. So it's one option, uh, $85, much cheaper option than, than many of the others. And you get some exercise too with so um, whatever works for you. All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, ignore the poll that I think I just pushed to you by accident. We're going to do uh, another poll before we dive into the Q&A. And I know that the Q&A is a big reason why people are here tonight, but uh, tell us what parts of the presentation that you found helpful. And if you're only here for the Q&A, there's an option for that. Uh, and then let us know that if after this presentation, you're more likely to purchase an electric snowblower. And while folks are answering that, I'm going to reshare my screen. Um, and you could, do you want to plug the electriclawninfo.org pages again? Yeah. So um, electriclawninfo.org has all the information about um, electric lawn mowers, electric chainsaws, and now electric snowblowers too. So we have the latest uh, info list there also uploaded. So, uh, so you can go and download it there and take a look at it and we have some resources there too for for all these areas so check those out uh, definitely definitely should be useful information for you and i would be 
remiss if I didn't also plug fresh-energy.org slash go electric, where we have all of the videos from our electric lawn care series posted, including a cool new video on induction cooking, uh, yet another way to get fossil fuel out of your home. And before we jump into the Q&A, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that tomorrow is Give to the Max Day. And Fresh en Energy is a clean energy nonprofit, and we are here for all Minnesotans with a bold vision centering equity and fast action for carbon reduction. So if you participate in Minnesota's unofficial giving holiday, please consider making a donation to Fresh Energy so we can keep doing events like this. And I think with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we are going to move into the Q&A. First, I'm gonna share my poll results with you all. There we go. And all right, so we've got a few questions right off the bat um, that I wanna start with. So Terry says, what about when there are leaves mixed into the snow? So does that have any negative effects on the, uh, how the snowblower runs? Does anyone wanna to speak to that? Just I haven't had a problem lunch. with it on either yeah. one. It seemed to chew them up just fine. Great, so it just chews them up and, and spits them out the top. You don't have to like dig them out. They didn't jam up at all? Uh, no, the only time I've had jamming is with really wet, heavy snow and get that with every snowblower I've ever used, so. Great. Yeah, I have the same similar um, experience with the single stage ones. Uh, they, they seem to be doing it just fine. Uh, just a one mm, caution here. Always, if you have any troubles with the, snow blower make sure that you take the i mean depower it before you go there for, uh, go touch it at all so um for example if, if it gets clogged or something like that take the batteries out just as a safety precaution before you touch in the auger area or any of that any of the shoot or any of that because that's the most scary thing that's the that's the most dangerous part of the whole thing is, is doing that. And I think Justin was showing us some tool that you can also use, but again, just make sure that you pull the batteries before using even that one. Justin, oh, you have- I think you are muted. You're muted. There wasn't, there, I there was picking go. up an echo in the garage. There you go. There we go. Um, a lot of snowblowers come with a little chute cleaner on them, both the Snowjo and the Ego two stage came with one. Uh, and gas ones will come with it as well because when there's snow and ice in there, those uh, augers can be under tension and you should never stick your hand in there, period. Uh, battery or gas running off, um, always use a stick of some sort <laughs> to you know, dig that out, so. Thank you, Justin. Um, all right, I think the most important question of the night comes from Gary. Do they have heated hand grips? I noticed that Jillian, that didn't show up in the spreadsheet. <laughs> uh, so does anyone here have a snowblower with heated hand grips or uh, yeah, what uh, what do you folks have to say about it? Are you just I think working so just hard? Have a million dollar idea. <laughs> I, I think you burn too much of your kilowatt hours. <laughs> oh, you just get it done so fast, you don't need it. <laughs> That's a good that point. But that is a good way to do it. I mean, I think in the future, we will see that uh, many of these. So uh, I'm, I'm sure this is one, one thing that will, will be in the future in one of the, some of these. Gary, you heard it here first, patent that idea. All right, now a question from Chris. Do the batteries charge better when they're indoors and warm versus out in the garage and cold? I know, Yuka, you talk a lot about babying batteries. So why don't you tell us what your preferred method is? Um, from charging wise, yeah, I, I, it definitely batteries like to be in a similar conditions as we do. If you want to really baby them, you keep them inside. So they are ready for you always. Um, so I'd probably also charge them in, inside in that, that way too. Um, if you have just used them and you have a charger in garage, it's not an issue to charge it there either because they are already warm from the use and you can do the charging there if, if that's, that's where you prefer to do it. So not an issue there. But uh, again, uh, if you want to pamper your batteries, keep them inside. Justin or Roger, any 
any hot tips on on battery TLC? On well, your based end? on my my Chevy Bolt, uh, you know, and any EV owner knows this, you lose a lot of capacity when your batteries are cold, right? So it makes sense to me. I have mine down here in the basement. Isn't that right, Yuka? No. Yeah, that's no. best way to do. It. And I need I need all the minutes I can get for my driveway. <laughs> yeah, you actually have some area to cover there in in your case. Yeah. It's a bummer that is this dark. It would be if it would be lighter. It would be cool to see the see the whole uh, driveway. But that's mm -hmm. a long one. Well, it, it's up a hill too. <laughs> Roger on the snow joes. I can't remember from the battery manual, and I might be misremembering. Do they say that? after like full use um, to let the batteries cool down before you charge them? Or do you recall that from the manual on yours? I didn't look that close at the manual, but I, I, I couldn't see that being a problem. Okay. I know the Egos have a, a fan on them for cooling and maintaining you know, some of the battery temperature, which is why they're a little bit bigger, but um, always refer to your manufacturer's manual too. You know, they'll have some recommendations. So Mary, Mary chimes in in the chat and she says that her Snow Joe says to let the battery cool down. So not a bad idea. That's what um, I had thought. So. Uh, I've got a question from Chris. He says that he lives in the UP. Welcome. Uh, he gets six, eight, and 10 inches of snow regularly. So do any of these units handle that kind of depth? And Jillian, I don't imagine that you have that spreadsheet memorized yet, but um, if you don't uh, have it right on the top of, off the top of your head, Yuka, it looks like has an idea. Well, I have Jillian's list here and it's easy to read. So um, here, when you look at the clearing depth that these manufacturers provide, these uh, the lowest ones are eight inches, and the highest ones are the two states ego. It's just twenty inches. So Justin, you have to test it out this this winter. <laughs> so yes, the answer would be yes, six, eight, ten inches. These should be able to do it. Perfect. Um, so. Uh, speaking of, I think this is kind of along the same line. So Doug says that he needs to clear about two feet of snow at the end of his driveway. So I'm guessing that's when our um, wonderful city snow plows go by and push all the slush back up into our freshly plowed uh, plowed space. So what about two feet, Yuka? Is that something that you should try to do when it's still wet and smushy before it freezes, I would assume? Definitely, definitely, that would be the good way. Uh, Justin, how have you had a, this kind of experience with your two states um, in the past? Um, yeah, that's actually the main reason why I got an electric blower or snow blower finally, because I got tired of scooping that out by hand. Um, I usually try to get out there and clear my driveway so that I don't have uh, the, you know, the snow plus the uh, snow plows. But I have, you know, sometimes you can't get out there right away. Um, yeah, you just kind of take it in wedges and it, you know, you can't just barrel right into it. But uh, yeah, I've used it to clear that out, so. Yeah, and, and I have the case where in my uh, roof, um, all the snow from one side and the bigger side of the roof drops right in front of, uh, of our door there. So then there's a pretty pack there. And I used last year the um, Craftsman, um, the one that is corded, and not very big. And if you did that, uh, as you said, if you took a slices of it, it did the job just fine. Uh, so so it, they, they seem to do a good job. With that. All right, another, I've got a question from Terry. So uh, which ones have LED lights? Now, Justin, I know that your two stage does. Um, yeah, I Roger, sure does your... Yeah, they both do. Oh, yeah, you did. Yep. Okay. Oh, great. Um, so it looks like the yard man of mine that no one's asking about, I am shocked, <laughs> does not have LED lights. So that is not one of the bells and whistles on that machine. Um, Yuka does, oh, there we go. We see those. Does the craftsman have lights, Yuka? No, craftsman doesn't have us have lights. So sorry about that. It's all right. It can go over in the corner with my yard man. <laughs> um, so it seems like LED lights are fairly common um, on, on some of the, the newer models. All right. And I don't think that's on the spreadsheet. Um, 
So, all right, Gary asks, can the charge be set up to stop at 80% for improved battery life? So number one, is it true that you shouldn't fully charge? And number two, is there a way to stop it? Yuka, this seems like a you question. Well, this would be manual operation here then. Uh, again, this is a bumpering your battery to the fullest, I would say, approach where you really, really want these. Um, I think these are these are designed so that there is capacity still left, but definitely if you if you are thinking to leave them for a longer time, um, I would recommend leaving them not fully charged. So if you think that you're not gonna use them for a month or longer, just use, uh, charge them halfway and then, then you can uh, leave them that way. The um, thing with many of these have is they have a battery, um, uh, meter there. These these ones are older, but the older ones. This doesn't have it. But what I could do with mine is that I could use the uh, the charging uh, unit, which actually shows here a battery state of charge when you charge it. So then I would just have to kind of watch it and stop it at eighty percent, just stop the charging at that point. But I don't know of any that would actually do it automatically. Might be wrong. I haven't looked at all of them. Maybe some of them do have. Uh, special features like that, but most of these you just do it manually. And uh, good thing with newer batteries, you can check the state of charge just by uh, pushing button and it shows you in, in lights there at the end of the battery. Well, John is chiming in here in the Q&A and he says that the Ego will self-discharge to 50% if it's left unused for 30 days. Oh, that seems handy. Yeah. Great. Uh, Dan is asking about incentives and rebates. Are there any federal, state, or tax credits or rebates for electric snowblowers or lawnmowers? And now I know the answer to lawnmowers. I don't know so much about snowblowers. And then it sounds like he's in Scott County and is wondering if you have any hot tips on on rebates being offered in Scott Scott County. Um, I think it comes. Uh, I think the the um, utility companies are the ones that potentially are providing those. So uh, I would check the utility company and see if they have. I know that East Central Electric has uh, some rebate going on and Dakota Electric too uh, is another utility company that, that does that. But talk to your utility company and see if they have some kind of incentives in place. And I see that it looks like it's just for lawn equipment, um, but if you submit a request and recommendation to add snowblowers, they may add that or adjust the plan for future. Yeah, yeah. Always, always talk with them and say, hey, you should definitely support us also getting snowblowers on your list there. Perfect. Um, all right, Terry asks, how long does it take to recharge a battery? And I guess that probably depends on the size of the battery. But do we all, if, if we could go around the room and share our recharge times, that, that might be a good start. Justin? I think it's three to four hours, but I have to. I, I was going to say, yeah, the Snow Joe was three hours. The Ego was about 40, 20 to 40 minutes. Yeah, it, it, it has to do with how, minutes. yeah, it has to do with how fast your charging unit is. So here I have two examples. I have the slower one and for the, the faster one for the same batteries. So this here is a 280 watt hour battery. And the slower one was uh, 210 watts. So that means that it takes over an hour, uh, hour and 20 minutes or something like that to charge with this one, that battery. And if you are in a hurry, usually again, if you want to pamper your batteries, you can charge, uh, charge them a little slower. Uh, if you are in a hurry and you just need to get the job finished, uh, take a break and go back there. This uh, faster one is 550 watt unit. So then this is 280 watts. So it's about half a little or maybe 35 minutes that it takes with this unit to charge. So that's the difference at least with these. So again, depends on how big the battery is and how fast your charger is. But you can always look at the back of the charger, look at the, what, what it's there and do the math. It's, it's pretty simple. Do you know what doesn't need to worry about a battery? My electric yard man, which I don't know if I have mentioned, um, but it is for sale for free. <laughs> uh, 
All right. So Ron has a comment. Um, he's hoping, yeah, th that might be next, Yuka, for me, honestly. Uh, one of those nice big shovels. Um, so Ron is commenting that he thinks he'd like to hear from you, Yuka, once you get that new auger blade um, on on the blower, because he thinks it'll like help help with the self-propelling, pull it forward a little mm -hmm. faster, yeah. um, just make it easier to use in general. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how, see how that goes. Um, I'm hoping that it makes it a little easier but clearly there the the other one was doing a better job with it than but it also that has a little bigger auger too and a little bigger blade so that might play a role we'll see uh, and i think you've got a convert philip who we know is a tech person loves tech uh says thank you for showing us the fisker shovel so I bet he'll be adding that to his garage here pretty soon there we go um i've got a question from from Gary, another battery question. So we'll see if you know this one, Yuka. Can any model be charged quickly with a J1772 level two quick charger? If we are talking about the electric cars, yes. If we are talking about the snowblow batteries, eh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just need to put the All right, so, the so multiple answers to that question. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, all right. So I don't see any other questions coming in. We talked about recharging and I think I've popped through the chat here. Um, does anyone have any, any of our panelists and guests here have any last words um, that you would like to leave people with? Mine is that I have a yard man for sale. Uh, Yuka, Roger, Justin, well, I, I will pick up here, uh, Hadi uh, mentions here that there are heated gloves. You can have a power in motion. There's a 12 volt glove liner. So I don't know if those can be plugged into uh, the, uh, the snow blowers, probably not. We should have an outlet there that you can plug into your heated gloves. Maybe that's even further uh, in the design here. And my um, snow shovel that Yuka showed is up for if anyone wants to use it for the winter and um, demo. So mine's available too. And also watch Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and Amazon or um, all those used markets for these devices. You can really get a lot of good equipment um, gently used for at a great price. Yeah, I, along those lines, um, there's a this is a little weird, but there's like a Minnesota auction website called KBID. I don't know if people have heard about it, but a shocking amount of electric yard care, leaf blowers, chainsaws, snow blowers, you name it, shows up there. A lot of times they don't have the battery, um, but that's an easy thing to take care of. So I would say um, KBID's a good place to start too for a secondhand piece. Many of those though are probably warranty returns. So just the uh... Keep that in mind when you buy one. So you have to be uh, ready to uh, open it up and check if there's anything wrong with it. But if you like tooling with them, that's cool. That's cool. Fair point. Thank you for that, Yuka. Uh, all right. Oh. Okay. So Stuart has a battery question, and I I know that uh, Yuka, you'll probably have an answer for this. Why is it okay to charge my Chevy Volt in the cold garage, but not okay to charge a snowblower battery in the cold? Well, as I said, I don't think it's a really a problem to charge it in cold, um, but uh, just it's more more of the storage of those is is where you where you want to keep them warmer. Um, so if you if you as I said, if you want to uh, charge it in garage fine if you want to charge it inside both probably work just fine and as some as someone said there it's it's also good to make sure that they don't get too hot but usually in the minnesota winter we don't have that problem and even, even if you use them they heat up some but uh, i think it's they cool down pretty fast all right and i think with that we'll close thank you to all of our guests and panelists tonight uh shout out to justin and yuka for being in their cold garages and, and Justin's partner as well. Thank you guys. Um, I'm sure it, it has not been, I mean, it's a pleasant winter day, but you know, you've been sitting around outside for an hour. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you everyone for being here tonight uh, and go ahead and check out 
the website that we shared earlier. And we'll be posting the video of this webinar on YouTube tomorrow for you to share with friends, family, relatives, etc. So with that, I'm going to end the meeting. Good night, everyone. Thank you.